Welcome to Five Good Minutes. You're listening to today's inspirational message on the book of Esther with Jenna Bajuzic. So we're jumping back into the book of Esther, chapter one. Xerxes has thrown this lavish banquet. He has called the queen, Queen Vashti, to come and be paraded in front of a bunch of men who were probably, like the king, high in spirits from wine, and she refused. Now, what King Xerxes does from here very much reveals his fear, his fear of losing this status, his fear of losing this power. He is afraid, also confirmed um, by the advice of the nobles that he asks. He is afraid that because the queen has said no to one thing, that women all throughout his kingdom will begin to say no to their husbands and their fathers, and that the power of the men will be usurped because the women will begin to say no. Now, there's a lot of things that could be said and thought (laughs) about that line of thinking. However, what we are going to look at here is what King Xerxes does. He writes an edict. He writes a new law. Now, this is suggested by one of his noblemen. There were seven men who were given special access to the king. They were highest in the kingdom. And one of them, Memukan, Um, he replies to the king when he's saying, what should I do? What, according to the law, what needs to be done to Queen Vashti? Because there needed to be a consequence for this behavior that she had chosen. Memukan replies that she has done wrong. And what if, you know, all the other women hear about this? So here's what Memukan suggests. He says, therefore, verse 19, if it pleases the king, let him issue a royal decree and let it be written in the laws of Persia and Media, which cannot be repealed, that Vashti is to never again enter the presence of King Xerxes. Also, let the king give her royal position to someone else who is better than she. Then when the king's edict is proclaimed throughout all his vast realm, all the women will respect their husbands from the least to the greatest. That's verses 19 and 20. Now, that is all written up. The king then sent dispatches to every part of the kingdom. And in the language of the local place, he proclaimed that every man should be ruler over his own household and that these women should not be able to tell these men no. Now, he does this out of fear. That's my take on it. He fears that his status and the status of men everywhere will be threatened because women might say no, that their power will be taken away. Now, let's compare this fear and this huge reaction. I mean, changing the laws of the entire kingdom that stretched from Egypt, modern-day Egypt, to modern-day India, that men need to be in charge and he's writing this law, and we have to really crack this down. A huge reaction to this one moment out of, that is really birthed out of the king's fear of losing his power. Now let's look at Psalm 93, where it talks about the power of God. Psalm 93 says this, The Lord reigns, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established firm and secure. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. The seas have lifted up, Lord. The seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the thunder of the great waters. Mightier than the breakers of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. Your statutes, Lord, stand firm. Holiness adorns your house for endless days. And that's Psalm 93. God's power does not come from forcing people to obey him. His power comes from who he is because as Psalm 93 says, he is from all eternity and his throne was established long ago. God's power existed before there were people to be in his kingdom. Before we were even created, God was all powerful. And his statutes, his laws stand firm. 
whereas the laws of the Persians have come and gone. God's house is adorned by holiness. And King Xerxes wanted to reign from his own fear and through making other people afraid of him. That is not who God is. God rules out of his own love for us. And then if you call yourself a Christian, we have the honor to obey God's good and holy laws, very much opposed to King Xerxes. We have the honor to obey those because we, are, we love him and are thankful that he is good, that he is holy, that this really is the best way to live. Thanks for joining us here today. There's a lot of great content to explore on Orchard Hill Plus and on the Orchard Hill main feed from the weekend. Have a great day.